Hello, good morning and welcome back to Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus. And I'm starting here in Eleftheria Square, if I got the pronunciation right, which is a combination of modern and the old. Here on the Greek side of Nicosia, the last divided capital in the world. And that is because a UN border runs through the middle of the city, separating the Turkish side from the Greek side. And in this video, I'm going to be exploring the Greek side. And in the same day, I'm going to cross the border to the Turkish side and show it later this afternoon. But that will be the next video. So I'm shooting two videos in one day here. And this is just the vibe of the square in the center of the city here in the morning. Very clean and organized with some nice architecture. Inhabited for more than 4,500 years Nicosia has been capital of the island since the 10th century. So I'm now here walking down Ledra Street, which is the main sort of center of Nicosia. And you'll see brands like H&M, the arches of McDonald's in the distance, international brands that when we cross to the other side in the next video, we won't see, which is interesting. And as I said, this is the main kind of tourist lane. There are souvenir shops, cafes, restaurants. Lots of tourists walk down here. And at the very end is the Ledger Street border crossing, which is the main crossing that most people will take to pass from one side of the city to the other. Starbucks as well on the left. But what I'm going to do now is swing left off this street I will come back at the beginning of the next video to cross the border. So I've already shown a little bit of Larnaca and the general feeling of Greek Cyprus here. So I thought in this Nicosia video, I would walk along the border and show the UN buffer zone close up because I think it's interesting. And the best place to start here, if you want to follow the same route as me, is Paphos Gate. It was one of the three gates built by the Venetians, the Venetian wall that runs around Nicosia in the Middle Ages. And it's called Paphos Gate because it leads to Paphos in the southwest of the island. And right here, as we walk closer, we can really see the border up close. To my left you have the Turkish flag and the flag of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus and to my right the Greek flag and the Cyprus flag. So we'll continue along here. Here atop Paphos Gate we still have barrels and also barbed wire. Here there is a building saying UN 65. The UN were the ones who enforced the buffer zone following the war in 1974. A church right here. Interestingly, they have the Pope's face here. Of course, as with everywhere in the southern part of Cyprus, you have Greek, and prices for things are in euros. Let's talk a little bit about the history to give some context to how this situation developed in the first place. 
once a part of the Ottoman Empire. In 1925, Cyprus became a colony of Britain and then finally got its independence in 1960 as the Republic of Cyprus. However, full unification of Cyprus's Greek-speaking majority, Greek Orthodox majority, and its Turkish-speaking, mostly Islamic minority lasted only 14 years. In 1974, Turkish troops invaded the northern coast of the island after simmering tensions. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of who started what because I am not an expert, I am just a visitor relaying you the general information. You can obviously do deeper reading and your own research to find out more specific details of the events that then led to the Turkish invasion of the island. But after fighting, just know that the island was partitioned and the northern third became the de facto state of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus and those Turkish people living in the southern exclaves of the islands, such as places like Larnaca then either left the island or moved north and those Greek-speaking people living in the north, in places like Kerenia, or now Gurney today, moved south. Almost like uh, Pakistan, India, partition style movement of people, just not on the same scale. So this is the situation right before the border here. The immediate streets just before it are an interesting place to walk around. You can see buildings that look like they've frozen in time since 1974 with that writing and UN signs, Sector City Troop, it says there. And even a portion of wall right here. You can see the border is just at the end of this street. These lanes closest to the UN buffer zone are some of the eeriest places of Nicosia where the divide between the two sides is felt way more closely than anywhere else. A lot of pretty historic buildings, 100% Greek food. And you get the feeling that on both sides, flags and bunting is taken to another level. Look at the, all these Greek flags here next to this Greek Orthodox church. When it comes to souvenir shops on this side, then you'll see lots of things related to Greek Orthodox. Old coins. Byzantine things and postcards. As I said, Greek Cypriots make up the majority of the island's population. In fact, it's about four fifths. And those Greek speaking Cypriots originate from either the Aboriginal inhabitants of Cyprus or 
that's why I'm filming on the GoPro so I don't uh, draw too much attention to myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, nearly got caught out there. If I carried on filming, I would have been in trouble. And the Peloponnese who colonized the island from around 1200 BC to the 16th century. Check out this cafe with the damaged front of a bus, probably from the Civil War. In some ways, Nicosia is a little bit like Beirut in that they, in many areas, are using the skeleton of the war for kind of modern bohemian uh, cafes and things like that. I'm sure we'll see more of that on the Turkish side too. Electric cars and new modern refurbished housing with well-placed trees and all the rest of it to tend to the wounds of war. A neat little cafe street here actually. Lots of kind of bougie places. Clothes shops and homemade fabrics here. Imagine what it's like living right here on the actual UN buffer zone itself. Look at these old rusted cars. And the barbed wire and abandoned buildings which lie within the buffer zone. Easier to get a closer look further away from Ledger Street as there are less people monitoring over here. Keep in mind and take note of the atmosphere of these back streets just behind the UN buffer zone and we will compare them with the northern side and see just how similar the streets and roads look, how the buildings look. So here we are. I have reached Tufexis Park. And that concludes the journey from Paphos Gate, walking parallel to the UN buffer zone across the southern side of Nicosia. And if you want to follow the same route, then you can do it from Paphos Gate to Tufexis Park. A football pitch. I thought it was a park, but it's actually just... <laughs> a turf and all these cafes are closed. There are mountains in the distance on the Turkish side. Beyond them is the coast. You can't make it out on the camera but I can see a Cypria and Greek flag and then just next to it a Turkish and Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus flag. I'm going to walk back towards Ledger Street on the way, I will grab some Greek food and then probably conclude this video and then make my way to the border crossing for the next one. And maybe there'll be people saying in the comments of this video, why don't you show more of the Greek side of Nicosia? Why don't you show the bars and the cool cafes and more of the street life and things to see and do. But this is what's interesting, I think. This is what's unique. And Nicosia kind of has what Larnaca has, it has what Limassol has. I'm guessing this used to be a Turkish populated area on the southern side of the city, as we have a mosque right here, which is firmly padlocked at its entrance. This area has probably seen a huge change in community in the last few decades. I wonder if on the northern side we'll find churches that are also in the same state.
Found this quite local looking place with no English, which is what you want. Everything's in Greek. They have various uh, pies here, some with halloumi, I think, others with spinach and a croissant with almonds, different types of cakes. I love the vibes, so I think I will sit here. So here I have a traditional cheese pie filled with halloumi, I believe. And I cannot remember the name of this Greek Cypriot uh, sweet, but it's filled with like a sweet cream. I'll find out in a moment. Orange juice. On the front it says 1952. The vibe is very local. I don't see any tourists around. It is a Saturday today, so uh, most people are here with families and that kind of thing. Mm. I am loving this dessert. I found out the name of it. It's called Galak Tor Boreko. And it has these kind of uh, syrupy flakes on the top and then a kind of milk interior that's uh, trifle like and it's really nice. Filling though, along with the pie. So I'm finishing off here with the latest craze in Greece and Cyprus, which is the Freddo. You can get it as an espresso like me or as a cappuccino. And it has this beautiful look to it. And I first saw it in Larnaca and had no idea. I'd never heard of it before, but I saw loads of people drinking them. And I've been drinking them ever since, perfect for Cyprus's weather. It's essentially an espresso shot poured into a metallic canister and is then blended with ice cubes and sugar if you opt for sugar to create this signature foam that you see here. And it's just uh, an iced espresso essentially with more liquid and signature foam and you can get it milkier with a cappuccino and uh, it's super refreshing especially on a hot day on the island or if you're in Greece maybe you can find them in other Mediterranean countries I'm not exactly sure but uh, if you're in Cyprus do make sure to try it if you're a coffee fan so there we are I'm back now on Ledger Street and I'm going to end this video of southern Nicosia here I'm going to cross the border right now using my passport of course and I will be showing the northern side of the city in the next video. So join me as I cross the border and explore the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. See you then.